Ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, I feel certainly welcome to the capital club of Bahrain. Our hosts have been very kind to us, to which I avail myself of this opportunity to thank them for their generous invitation. Mexican cuisine is composed, or composed of native ingredients, many with certificate of origin, now exported to the world. Chocolate, chilies, zucchini, toma tomato, avocado, vanilla, maize, but it has also combined new elements and cooking processes brought from Africa, the Middle East, and Europe during the Spanish colonial period. The result is an array of colors, tastes, imaginary. Many dishes combine these traditions becoming national anthems. Gentlemen and ladies, we have uh, here Mr. Gerardo Vázquez Dogo. He is one of the greatest chefs in Mexico. And uh, I'm sure you will enjoy his cooking. And we also have Claudio, who is uh, keeping company and uh, preparing the dishes you are going to enjoy very soon. It's a long way since uh, traditional Mexican cuisine has been declared world heritage to the world by UNESCO. I has the, had the opportunity to be present in that precise moment when uh, the president of the jury says accepted uh, to the Mexican cuisine. Now it's uh, a huge honor to be in Middle East where the interest of uh, knowing our traditional culture is different than the popular Tex-Mex around the world that's a, a different cuisine. It's not Mexican, it's a different cuisine based in uh, Mexican and indu industrialized products from uh, United States of America. But our traditional Mexican cuisine is a very more complex. You will see the, the video in a few moments. And my dear, a very good friend, Cook, but also he's a very important journalist in Mexico for uh, Culinaria Mexicana. So he speaks a lot of uh, better than me. <laughs> <laughs> I cook better, but. <laughs> so, yeah, he cook a lot of better. Uh, thank you for being here. We are so delighted to be here at Barre. Thank you for the Capital Club to invite us to live this experience with you. I'm Claudio Poblete, I'm, I'm actually the chairman of the uh, 120 best restaurants in Mexico, who is the, the first list to get on the Latin America's 50 best, and then you go to the world 50 best. So Gerardo now is running a restaurant in Mexico City called Nikos, whose his family runs about 60 years ago this year. He uh, is the anniversary of the 60 years, 60 years, six, six decades doing this traditional Mexican cuisine on, in the north of the Mexico City and with many endemic uh, products that Gerardo uh, make a, a lot of research uh, in the, in the, on the hand of a very known well cook of Mexico that's called name uh, Alicia Gironella. It's considered the grandmother of the Mexican cuisine because uh, she's a researcher of many books around the, our, our country. So Gerardo is one of her best student, uh, students. So now Nikos is recovering many ingredients and recipes that uh, uh, the Mexicans thought that they are, we are lost. So you are going to try now some of these recipes that Gerardo is recovering for, not for only for and the products. Cli <laughs> his clients, uh, for Mexico. He is a well a renowned chef and a very beloved chef of all of the chefs in Mexico. And we hope you enjoy this meal. We have to say this is slow food. This is slow food. So we're preparing uh, dish, dish by dish. dish. So please enjoy and be patient because <laughs> this is slow. <laughs> I, I just received an invitation uh, for the club okay. and obviously it's so interesting to, to travel and visit a country like this, amazing view, a beautiful uh, place to cook and I say yes and that's why I'm here. I like to travel a lot. I have been uh, last year in in Europe, in Milan, in 
Jordan, Israel, Colombia, United States, I don't know. I travel a lot. Yeah. <laughs> so if someone uh, tells me there is a plane in, involved, I always say yes. <laughs> 25 years ago, I was an architect. I studied architecture and uh, industrial design, but I recovered my origin. My family origin is uh, my family owns a restaurant, Nikos. And I started to work at the restaurant, and then I should study uh, cuisine. And I approach to my, my, she's my mentor, my friend, my, like my uh, godmother, <clears throat> Alicia Gironella. She's the author of uh, Gran Larousse, the great Larousse for Mexican cuisine. And for about 20 something, 22 years, we have been working together until, until now. I get uh, to know the the slow food movement because Alicia was married with uh, Giorgio De Angeli. Uh, he passed away about six years ago, but he was a very good friend of Carlo Petrini, Carlin. So I met Carlo Petrini about 18 years ago, and we became friends. I have traveled to Italy many times. I have eaten the Salone del Busto, uh, Terra Madre. I, uh, I'm very close to the philosophy of a slow food because I born as a cook in, in that, uh, with that philosophy with Alicia and Giorgio. It started as an enogastronomy movement about the, the right, the human right to defend the pleasure of uh, enjoying food. You can't enjoy food if, if it doesn't mean anything to you. So it uh, defends the traditional flavors, the local products, the traditional cooking, and then became more an eco-gastronomy movement. You can uh, preserve a traditional dish if you don't preserve the, the product. Then a social part became you, you can defend a product if you can't defend first the producer, the farmer, the, the people who is growing the, the fields for, for the food for us. So <clears throat> it's a more social, eco-gastronomy movement. Bueno, limpio y justo. Good, is, it has to be good, tasty, but also good for your health. Uh, Clean, not just, just uh, washing, but clean with the nature. And also uh, justice for who eat a good price, who grow the product in the field, who cook it and leaves from the work of cooking that product. The owner of the restaurant also has to live in a justice price and it's a, a, a short change from the producer to the transformer to the consumer avoiding all the transportation all the long chains of commerce <coughs> to get more justice price there is a panel of uh, people who vote journalists chefs uh, <clears throat> winemakers, it's a very complex, it's a very huge uh, group. And they vote about their uh, best experience, gastronomy experience. Not about, it's not a list about the luxury of the restaurant or the, the silver or, or, or the crystal or, uh, it's not about that. It's about the experience of the flavors in, in one restaurant. And when they go, they vote for me. I don't know when they go. I don't know them. And last year, we uh, raised up to 37. It's like having a son. A restaurant is like uh, you having a child. 
you can also have child all over the world. It's not <laughs> good for the child. It's a very local restaurant, only in a neighborhood is a mixed area between middle class, uh, working commerce and cultural because there are many universities around the, the restaurant so it's a mixture of uh, academics and uh, businessmen and families, traditional families uh, going to the restaurant. Now about uh, the list, uh, there are a lot of adventure gastronomy foodies who has to travel about half an hour to get to my restaurant and eat traditional Mexican style, family style food. I think the, the, the way that Mexican we eat is a lot of plates, not only one plate. So there is favorites around the, the year because it's changing. Uh, during the season of chiles en nogada, it's a uh, chile stuffed with many things. <laughs> it's a very complex dish. About, uh, but it's, uh, for the season is August and September. That, that's the favorite dish for that season. But in December there is another dish about fish. And in Easter is another dish and in spring is another dish. There are some classics uh, for the restaurant. Uh, it's a uh, sopa de natas. It's like a cake, something like a cake. Uh, in Mexico we eat soup, like a broth but also dry soup, sopa seca. It's, when it's rice or pasta, we always say it, it's sopa seca. And we always have a broth and then a sopa seca and then the main course. So it's more a, a long menu. Even in a traditional family, it's not for fancy restaurants. It's the, the way we eat. So there are many favorites in my main menu, like sopa natas like the cactus salad, like um, catch of the day, the fish. We have many different varieties of uh, seafood fish in, in Mexico. And I love fish. And moles, we have about five different moles in my restaurant, so there is always one different mole to taste. Many for one person in my restaurant is about 20, 20, something dollars, from 20 to 30 dollars, including wine. <coughs> uh, also in the restaurant, we have a very important wine list. Almost 95% Mexican wine. It has a, a award of excellence for wine spectator. 5% more or less uh, Mexican wines made by Mexicans outside of the country, in France, in Australia, in the United States. <clears throat> Very interesting. And caprichos, I don't know how to say caprichos, when it's something that you like and there is no justified for having wines that I like. I have one Champagne, I have one Albariño, I have one uh, Barolo, because only because, because I like them. But it's, it's also very important for the restaurant. Beers, artisanal beers, and wines, not only mezcales.